Coming on to the podcast is John Marquez, photographer out of Los Angeles, California. Um, what's good with you, man? Uh, not much, man. Just uh, enjoying the last day of the weekend. Kind of just chilling, trying to stay cool. Um, it's pretty hot today, so um, yeah, just out here, man. Just uh, just got back off. Uh, I've been traveling for a while the last few weeks, so this was like my first week back. So it's been good tonight. So just be relaxed and. Uh, just hang out with my family and friends and stuff so where were you traveling to um just last i was in where was i i was in mexico i was in mexico last sure. week i was uh there for about six days um uh out for work so uh that was like my last uh international trip of of the year um so it's kind of bittersweet because i like traveling but it was good to like be home and just like chill for a little while because it gets tiring. Oh, dude, I bet. Yeah. Little, little jet lag and shit, right? Yeah, definitely, man. It's crazy. Yeah. So, uh, I'm a fan of your work, man. I've been checking out a lot of your shit and thank like you. I really like your eye. Thank you, thank you. Um, what is it you think that separates you as a photographer? It makes your work kind of unique. Um, shoot, I don't even know. I see so many. Uh, I just see so many dope people, and I just get inspired by like so many different things. But um. I don't know. I just really like to, just with my work, I really, like, my goal is to, to show something or, like, when I shoot with people, just to, like, make something that's, like, the best that they've, like, um, I guess collaborated with or worked with. You know, I just want to yeah. be something that, uh, I don't know, that really stands out. So, like, I'm really heavy into editing. Maybe sometimes I over-edit, but I really like to, like, add anything and everything i can just to make a picture dope yeah. um like i'll be editing on my computer um i'll use lightroom and i'll do like my my normal thing i have like my presets that i use but then after like i, ha I have uh, apps on my phone that i'll throw another like little effect or filter on just to like just give it a little more like it's like kind of like putting your touch on it right exactly right. yeah just a just a little just a little something where people see it like oh yo that's sean's work or that's yeah. john mark's work or whatever so you. let me help you out real quick cool cool all right so yeah man uh i and i get what you're saying because everybody has to have like their little touch in any like industry that you're in like whether you're right. a fucking rapper photographer everybody has that little niche that se se separates them from the other person 100 percent. yeah but what did you like how did you even get started into photography what what inspired you at first shoot um it's like a long story man i was a uh, I went to school in uh in Illinois, oh, so shit. yeah, I was out there for four years. I graduated in twenty. Uh, I graduated high school in twenty thirteen, and then I went out there uh, that summer. Um, I played uh, football, so I got a partial scholarship. So that's why I went so far. Oh. And um, I was, I wasn't even into like f like photography, like with a camera. I would always like to take pictures on my phone, and like just stuff like that for like Instagram, like back in the day. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't till um, it wasn't until I think it was twenty fifteen, like fall twenty fifteen. Um, like around my birthday, um, like every time I would go home for breaks, like I would link up with my homies and we just like post up and take pictures with our phones and stuff. So yeah. that, that, uh, that October I was like, all right, I want to get my own camera. So I was out at school at the time. What year was this? This was, was 2015. 2015. Okay. 2015, Damn, so, so you, you honestly, like you still not new at it. It's been about four years. That's right. That's still a, a to me. It's pretty account. new. Like, I mean, it's not like yeah. super, super like short time, but it feels pretty new to me. Yeah. But compared, um, just compared to like a lot of people that have been doing this shit their entire life, right? Exactly. Like, it's a trip, dude. It's really a trip. But I yeah. notice that nowadays, like with everything, people just get into it and like it could just take off for them within yeah. like months or like within a year. It's crazy. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so I just decided to. Um. I wanted to get my own camera. Um. So, uh, my parents were actually down for the weekend for my birthday, and they helped me get a camera and stuff. And so it was like a, just a real. Uh, intermediate camera there's like a rebel t5 that's like um, that's like the starter kit exactly yeah. yeah that's what they call it on the, the best <laughs> buy it was like a starter kit it came with like <laughs> two lenses and like a bag and stuff um but anyways like i got a camera and then um i just kind of at this time i was i don't know i was just kind of like not struggling but just i was away from home and i was just getting homesick and i just wasn't really doing a lot i was kind of just staying in my room and like watching netflix and being sad and stuff i mean i had my friends but it was just like a weird time yeah. and so then i just started like going out and like just taking pictures of like i would go to downtown chicago um just take pictures of the city or um just my friends like yo like like put on something cool like take a, i just want to take pictures and stuff and just uh you know practice and 
um i wasn't doing it like seriously or anything but um i was just kind of just doing it for fun just to kind of kill time um football was stressful work was uh school was stressful so i was just kind of just like a little outlet just to do other stuff you know like a little side hobby right and then um i'm trying to think it was like i want to say a full year passed like it was almost like this, the same time the following year because and that whole summer like I was shooting like just with friends back in LA and like we go to Chinatown downtown and just like mess around and stuff yeah. um but I had read this um I would follow like Hypebeast I'm sure you know Hypebeast yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, of course. I would follow Hypebeast page and I, at, the, at the time I was like looking at their app because they have an app too they would always post like cool articles or whatever and then um I came across this one article and it was just like about like concert photographers and I had uh like a few uh What's her, what's her names? It was a, uh, it was like Vic Mensa's photographer at the time. It was a uh, some girl photographer who actually does stuff for like Beyonce and Jay Z. Okay. And it kind of just was like a little uh, little article interview, just asking like, yo, how did you get into it? Um, like shooting shows or shooting music related stuff, like artists and stuff. And everyone had like their own little story, but everyone kind of just like just did it. Like it wasn't like a like a plan or anything. They kind of just got out there like snuck their camera into shows um bought like cheap tickets to like small shows and then started taking pictures and stuff so i saw this and i was like dang like like this is dope like i kind of want to like this would be cool if i could do something like this yeah so uh i i was going to this uh super duper cow show with my homies out in chicago at this like this was before like i spy and like before he like blew up and stuff right um it was like a little like reggie's rock club it was like a little bar club in uh downtown chicago and um my friends bailed on me so i had already bought my ticket <laughs> and i was like damn like what the heck am i gonna do so i ended up going by myself That's i ended dope. up putting myself to the show and Pe- then people be scared to go places by themselves man. right like yes. i i like it personally because i like to like get out and like just be in my own head and my own thoughts and stuff especially as a photographer too right like, you don't really need anybody else to <laughs> be somewhere if you have your camera right exactly you just like this that time with yourself and just like I don't, you don't have any distractions. It's pretty nice to me at least. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I decided to go to that show by myself and I took my camera and it wasn't like a huge show where like that crazy security. So I kind of just had it on like on my, on my side under my jacket and then like they scanned my ticket and I just went in and, um, it was a dope show. Uh, I got some sick shots and that was like my first like concert shots ever. Um, so I posted them on the gram. I shot like him and his, his, uh, his opener, I think, okay. it was like Kweku Collins or something like that. Mm. But anyways, I took took the photos, edited them. I was like all psyched when I got back home. Like, dang, this is cool. This is <laughs> like, I'm trying to think how old was I was at the time. I was like 19 or something. Um, but yeah, and then uh, based off that article that I read, um, they like were just saying how they would reach out to different outlets, different like management teams and stuff, just to get into other shows. So I was like, all right, that's the next step. That's what I want to do. Like. All right, so I put a little portfolio together. I had like that one concert that I shot. Um, <laughs> that's part of your resume. That's now, part right? of my resume, yeah. and then all the other stuff I did. And then um, there was this. Uh, it's, it's a crazy story because it kind of comes full circle, like in the end. Okay. But it was a Masego show. Okay. And it was um, it was actually Taku Beats. He's like a DJ. Yeah, yeah. I love fuck with Taku. He's yeah. He's hard. So it was his show, and Masego was opening, and um. I had just like discovered Masego's music maybe like maybe like two months before that. And what year was this? This was uh twenty sixteen now. Okay. Yeah, fall of twenty sixteen. Um and this was like shoot I like discovered Pink Polo if you know Masego's yeah, music. Yeah. yeah, Pink Polo E P. And so um And th- this is like right around where he started kinda like blowing up too, right? Right, like yeah. the SoundCloud thing was happening, like uh-huh. a bunch of SoundCloud people were popping and he was like popping too. It was that him and that medicine club Man, isn't it crazy like sorry to cut you off but just like how mm-hmm. all these different fucking platforms like are just just launch like, people man. fucking at the same time like it's t- it's all about timing like it's crazy dude yeah. honestly yeah. like it's kind of you kind of get lucky you know like yeah. if you're in the right spot at the right time then it could just work out for you mm-hmm. it's a trip yeah um but yeah so he, they had a show and um I had that little, I put that little portfolio resume website thing together, like on a bus ride back from one of my games. Um, For real? Yeah, it was like a long, we had like a game in like South Dakota or North Dakota or something. It was like a, it's like a six hour, I don't even remember. It was a long, long drive and I was just putting together my little website thing. And so uh, 
I found Masego's manager's email like on SoundCloud or something. Um, so I just messaged him like, yo, like, um, like, let me shoot your show. I'll give you some dope work. Um, give it to you like next day and stuff like that. Just kind of just, just giving him something like some value, some value for oh, free. Yeah. I was like, I just want to like get in, like get credentials and that's it. And they responded quick. Like, yeah, like for sure. Like you can get your information. And then I just, uh, the show came up and I went and, um, I got my little like media pass and stuff. It was my first <laughs> media pass. So I was like all psyched about <laughs> it. Um, you gotta frame that bitch. <laughs> no, for, no, dude, like I lost it. <laughs> oh, fuck. But, um, uh, yeah, so I had it and then, um, I got in and shot the show and like took some, took some dope photos, um, of Masego and also Taku and, um, uh, Masego, I think he like posted one photo way back then and I didn't even meet him or anything. I just like shot the show. And I was just psyched about that. Mm-hmm. And, um, that was it. Like I went back home and I was like, dang, this is cool. Like this is something like maybe I want to like keep trying to do, you know? Yeah. So, um, so you never intended for th- for this to like really be your like career in a sense right or like not yeah not at all man like i went to school for business management and um i got my degree and stuff but like even when i was going to school i was like dang what the heck am i gonna do like like have my own business or something but i don't even know what kind of business or whatever so this kind of just happened like turned like was a hobby that turned into something i guess like my career that's dope yeah so and also something i'm passionate about so i'm just blessed for that yeah um but yeah that was kind of just like the starting point of everything i like a few weeks later uh so i had shot that one show and there was like a low uzi show in chicago as well and i was like emailing everybody like trying to find any email i can just to get into the show and then ended up finding the promoter's email and like we were talking back and forth and i got into that show and i was like the second show i shot it was like a, a a low uzi show and like I'm in the photo pit and I'm looking to my left and I'm looking to my right and I'm seeing like these dudes with like some crazy setups, like some like one DX cameras, like some some six D, some five Ds, and, and I have my little T five. Oh, you still have the T five? Dude, I still have the T five, man. They're probably like, like they're, they're looking at me like, dang, who like, is this guy? Like what the, what is he doing? <laughs> and they got their big lenses and stuff. Yeah. I'm just there like, dang, like I don't belong here. Were you intimidated? I or mean, I wasn't I, I wasn't. Um but then I was just, like, happy to be there, you know? I was like, dang, like, I'm in the photo pit. Like, this this venue's huge. Like, there's a bunch of crazy kids going, like, wild for Uzi. Yeah. But this time, this is when Uzi was, like, I mean, he's, he's big on top now. top of the game, though. But he right? was, like, that big, like, the top SoundCloud, like, SoundCloud rapper at the time. Yeah. This was, uh, I think it was Rainbow Dread Uzi. So, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. If you know Uzi by, yeah, like, his dreads. By, by his styles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His phases. He kind of goes into. Right. Okay. So, it was, like, that time. And I just had my T5 and like a 50 millimeter, uh, like $100, 50 millimeter, 1.8 lens. And I'm just like shooting and uh, I'm like standing on like one foot on the speaker and like camera up just trying to get shots and stuff. And uh, usually like they kick kick everyone out by three songs uh, for a show. And for whatever reason, this one, like this was, the photo pit was like 20 heads deep of photographers. And Damn. they I think it was just too many f- for them to like kick out at once, like security. So I just shot the whole show and then um, I edited, I think it was like, it was October 30th because it was like Halloween the next day or something like that. But I, I, I went back home and I edited all night and like I took some like dope photos, like some of my favorite of all time. And I go look at the tag photos of like the venue and like Lil Uzi's tag photos and like not to be like, like boastful or anything, but I think I took some of the dopest photos out of True. everyone there. Yeah, okay. so I'm like, and I had like one lens, wasn't even a zoom lens. Yeah. So like that was just another like thing, and like, and kind of in the little path that I was like, dang, like, I really like this, I really enjoy this. And and that goes to show too, just like how you don't need all the fancy ass equipment to be a good photographer, right? Or like, or how how would you say how important is the equipment to being like a a good a successful photographer? Um, it definitely helps. It yeah. definitely helps, but exactly what you said, like, you don't need all that to, like, take great photos or just to create a story or just show, like, show something, you know? Um, there's a lot of people that have, like, these dope setups, this dope equipment, um, and they just don't have, like, an eye or, like, the vision, you know? Yeah. And no disrespect to them. It just, like, some people have it and some people don't. Um, but, like, if you really, like are like passionate about it and you really have like a like a drive and a vision for it like you'll make what you have work okay um so 
that's just something I tell people. Um, even now, like, like my setup, like there's a lot of times where I use like these like 20 year old like lenses um like push pull lenses instead of like usually when you zoom you like you turn it to zoom on a camera <laughs> on a camera lens but i have this old lens that you push and pull to zoom and it just shows like it just like an older lens but i i, I love that lens and i take some dope photos with it okay. so it just it just depends man like definitely don't get me wrong like new equipment it helps yeah. a lot <laughs> but like some people just don't have the bread for that you know yeah of course not some of this shit costs like upwards of like 10k 20 like obviously all going high man yeah. like all together like just like you just have to accumulate it over time like if you're lucky to get it all at once then then you're blessed but yeah like for me like i'm still building um building off that but um yeah like so just to anyone that's listening and is like trying to i don't know uh take photos or take a video or just create content like just work with what you got and um just get good at what you have and then the time will come and you'll you'll be able to upgrade um that t5 that i had i rocked it for like two years um i didn't upgrade until like right before i graduated so like i shot a ton of shows um this is while i was at school i shot uh uzi lil yachty um kalani uh chance drum like a bunch of people all with the rebel all with the rebel man That's and dope. it was like <laughs> i had like two lenses and like they weren't like super expensive lenses they were just like stock lenses um but it was like something i was passionate about i wanted to like you have to like when you're in those settings you just got to move around and make things happen because yeah. you don't have the right equipment to to make it easier for you that, that's dope to hear man because in like especially photography or like at any creative industry i feel like the biggest barrier to entry for people who want to get involved in it or like have always been thinking about like damn that'd be dope to become a photographer to become a dj or whatever they want to do it's just that like they think in their head oh fuck it's going to be so expensive to like buy all this equipment so it's d- dope to hear you say like and to see where you're at right now that like you can get started with like the most simple equipment and exactly you know what I mean? exactly and did you did you take any you didn't take any classes or like any of the, any photography classes youtube that? man <laughs> yeah that's youtube and trial and error like i yeah i didn't take any classes um i was just i had a little i had knowledge of photoshop from like high school from a high school class but um like i taught myself how to use the camera and like i wasn't using auto either i was like i really wanted to learn like just how to be able to change settings and different environments and stuff so i really like kind of like just practice over and over and i'm still practicing now like i wouldn't say like i know everything like i'm still learning every day but um yeah i just taught myself how to use a camera how to use like editing uh software like lightroom um premiere um stuff like that so is that what you use use lightroom yeah i use lightroom to like color grade and like just mess with like highlights and shadows and stuff and if i do any like crazy like edits like collages collages or like anything like super not out there but you know just a little different then i'll go and put it into photoshop and stuff right yeah so and that, that's cool dude that like how how to hear about how you put yourself out there right to further yourself because like that's what it takes man like fucking putting in putting the work in to like be kind of vulnerable too to just like asking anybody and everybody you can for like connects exactly what you need for me like i put I, into my own life i played football too in gotcha. college um, but when I was getting recruited, I went like the junior college route. Like I was mailing my fucking highlight tape to like everybody. E- yeah, and I was anybody. Like, yeah, you couldn't really like like you could even go on like for me. I was looking at colleges websites and like looking at like the staff directory. Every coach, dude, I was emailing my fucking my my huddle highlight tape to like every single coach. Right, because like, you didn't know if it was like gonna fall through the cracks with someone. Like you exactly. wanted to make sure everyone had it. So <laughs> and like. Even if I let's say I emailed like a hundred coaches, like I think I might have got like five responses. But even those five responses that I got are still like five responses I would have never had. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, without fucking putting my putting my name out there, you know, putting myself out there. So that's dope to hear that you were doing that. And that's also too just like being an athlete and playing sports. Um, but having like a side hustle or side hobby outside of that is like super important, I think, because a lot of people like their lives are this game like whatever sport they play right, you know, and they get caught lot, up right? in it yeah like i see i've dude i've seen it so much and um like i was i balled out in high school and then i got to college and i'm not a big guy i'm i was like super small so i didn't get a lot of playing time mm-hmm. until like my my senior year and then i 
kind of was like rotating rotating in but that was just because of my size so like yeah it was on my sophomore year i'm like damn like football it's pretty much over for me like uh-huh. i'm using it to help pay for my school i'm gonna continue to play i love the sport i love my brothers on the team but like i gotta figure out something else because this is about to end and um like even like players on my team they're like thinking the nfl and stuff like that i'm like dude like you gotta widen your widen your horizon you know just think about other things more there's more important things in football yeah football will always be there but like the percentage of uh people that get into like the next level is like i think it's like one percent or like a little bit less than one less than one percent for sure yeah Yeah, people that go into the league yeah so it's just like with athletes like i'm not downplaying that or anything like that but Mm. i there's a shirt that i just saw like a few months ago and on the back of the shirt it says creatives are the new athletes okay so it's like a cool little it's like a cool little thing like damn but it's kind of true though because like i mean they're always there's always going to be like sports and stuff and and like dope athletes but like just the level of like competitiveness now is just crazy like they're really like supernatural like human beings now yeah so um but like i just see like creatives and people like whether it's photography or like clothing design or like just musicians they're just like blowing up and like just people are really dive, diving heavy into it and i'm sure it's always been that way but just like the way with social media is now everyone's able to see it more and uh and just on the regular so i just think like this it's a great time to just be a creative person you know yeah definitely and it seems like you're pretty good at too at like networking and like moving in the industry itself i mean from what it seems like <laughs> uh is that, is that not true <laughs> no i mean i guess yeah now but or like uh, how, how big how important is that to being a successful photographer just like the connections that you make with people it's honestly very big um i mean it's a very important um for me though like it i think it was a little different just because i'm not a super uh I'm not a super like talkative guy. You're I'm like extroverted or anything like that. Yeah, I'm not extroverted at all. I mean, I've like learned to be over time, just okay. because you need to be in some situations. But like, I was like super shy, and I've and I grew out of it a little bit. But like, I wasn't um, like I won't go up to people and like introduce myself like unless I really like have to. Right. So for me, I think what worked is I was doing a lot of like networking like I, via like media and stuff. So emails. Um, just Instagram stuff like that it's using your resources right? right but for me like I think the thing that stood out for me was just being like um I guess reliable and just like a good um I don't want to say good person but like just being someone like that could like you're easy to work with you know like yeah. I, a lot of people have told me just in like now and like in the past like yo you're like one of the most easiest people to, to work with to like uh like if they want changes and they, they talk to me like I'm super uh just like open to what they think and like wanting to like like please their needs in in that in whatever it's a little project or a job or whatever so i think that's like what allowed me to be like my name to be like moved around and stuff like yo like professionalism i guess professionalism yeah professionalism and just um so i think for me networking definitely but just being someone that like that someone could count on you know and um just reliable i guess yeah, because it is a super saturated market, like, Dude, industry. Super. So, yeah, I mean, being genuine and being a good person, like you said before, like, the whole Masego thing came full circle. You know what I'm saying? So, and you've only been at this for, like, five years, about, right? Four. Four, five, four yeah, years. Almost four, yeah, yeah. Almost four years, yeah. So, yeah. so just imagine, like, the next four or five years, like, how much more you can grow. Right. You know? It's crazy, man, like. Yeah, it's a trip just because, like, I graduated school in 2017, like, uh, got my degree, and then I had, like, that summer off. I was, like, coaching at my old high school. Okay. And then I finally got, like, a, a, a nine-to-five job. I was doing, uh, like, social media marketing e-commerce for, like, this women's uh, clothing company in uh, city industry, so, like, down the street. Okay. Yeah, I was, so. I was out there, and I was, uh, I was there for a year, <coughs> and it was cool at first um i learned a lot but it was just like dang like i don't know if i could do this like desk job like nine to five dude it's hard man and Mm -hmm. i was getting like super stressed out like and like i was getting like this pain in my back and pain in my neck just from being at a desk and stuff and like (laughs) just like the stress that went along with it so like damn dang this isn't it man like there's more to life and i was like doing like my side hustles um photo wise like um 
I think my first like paid like I guess like pretty big gig was uh you know the um the weed pen uh was it Steezy? Yeah, Steezy. Yeah, yeah Steezy. Yeah. I don't smoke. Okay. But um they hit me up, they're like, Yo, like we love your work, uh blah blah blah. Like would you wanna like what's your day rate and stuff for like a shoot? Like a social media shoot, I'm like, dang, like I don't even know my day rate. I haven't <laughs> I haven't even done anything like this before. So I, <laughs> I just like start Googling like day rates and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I gave him like a day rate, um, and I shot like some stuff for their social media and this is like right before like this was like uh, maybe like a year and a half ago so like they're pretty popping now yeah. but they weren't as popping um so i did like a thing for them and actually took a sick day <laughs> off at work to do Just that to do that to do that gig because i was like dang like this could be a like an open door for for like my future stuff yeah and at this time at work i was already like mm, i think mm, like nine months in at my job and i was already thinking like dang i want to just quit and just do photo full time so that happened and then this other brand that i work with that um shout out to uh, jason and mandy from broken promises they're like a they're they're a dope like streetwear brand um but they were like one of the first people that like got me doing stuff and uh, i did like a bunch of like shoes for them and like i do stuff now currently just for like social media stuff but they like kind of just gave me an opportunity and so like after those two things i was like dang like i could really like like dive into this and like try to make this my main like my main hustle do you think uh just the fact of like all the more all the all, all the much more time that you could devote to it because of the nine to five was eating up so much of your time and energy right exactly i was just thinking like yeah like i'm just doing like this stuff like after work or on the weekends like imagine if i had all my time just to focus on that it's kind of scary too though at the same time right because yeah. that's your financial backing and it's like exactly you that on the line like exactly fuck you gotta jump if you right want the, if you want the rewards exactly my mentality was like yeah i'm like i'm 20 at the time i was 22 like i'm 22 i'm still young like try that try it out now if it don't work then yeah get back on the horse it's not um, like it's not like you have like a wife and kids to take care of like this exactly. is the time to take those risks right and luckily like my like my family my, my parents were like super supportive because it wasn't like just something like like night and day like oh i want to do photography now like they had seen like the they had seen the like progression um like my parents follow me on social media so they had okay. seen my work from like the beginning yeah. and seen like dang like you're shooting all these shows and like you're going all these places um like they're like trip out and stuff because i would be all like everywhere yeah. um in chicago and in la at just all these different places and so they had seen it and they like were like okay like it's not just something that like he's putting some like thought into it it's not just something like oh i'm gonna quit my job you know yeah um, so I was lucky for that because I know a lot of people I've heard stories, um, just similar, similar like stories and, and photo or video or like music. And yeah, man, they tell their parents like, yeah, I want to quit my job and pursue this. And their parents are like, dang, no. Well, think about it, man. Like our parents, their generation was kind of like the industrial revolution. So they were taught like nine to five job is like what you need to have a successful life and sustainable life. So, like, they don't understand, like, there weren't many creatives back then. So, oh, yeah. that's why, like, it's so important to have your parents' support. And like you were saying, a lot of other creatives don't have that because they're most of our parents are just like, you want to drop out and fucking, or you want to, like, quit your job and yeah, start you're doing crazy. this thing like, that, like, have I have no yeah. yeah, man. It's crazy. So, it's dope that your fucking parents were really, really backing you on that. Yeah, I was blessed for that. So, that was just super cool. So... Yeah, it was just something that was going through my head. I'm like, all right, yeah, like I'm gonna be taking this, taking this like jump soon. I was kind of just trying to plan everything out and trying, trying to save <laughs> just in case and stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's when kind of, I don't know, like, I don't want to say destiny it sounds lame, but <laughs> um, like, Masego had like this free show in LA. It was, it was like spring of 20. 2018 okay hit a free so i saw my job hit a free show in la and uh i kind of emailed his manager again he had a new manager at the time and i kind of just like used that i had like uh took photos of him before i was like yo like i took photos of him say going to chicago like let me shoot your show um it was a free show so like i was planning to go anyways but i wanted to like actually take pictures for like masego yeah so um like the his manager was cool shout out justin the row MVP. Um, <laughs> but he's like, yeah, like, come shoot the show. So, like, at this time, 
I just started making collages. I haven't really have it on my Instagram like right now, but if you look down, I have some like crazy collages of like just different portraits and like music related stuff. But that really like was kind of taking off for me at the time. So I like took photos of Masego, uh, made this like cool collage. Like he's like on the collage like five times, like just playing the sax and like singing and stuff. And um, they really they really liked and like yo like can you change the dimensions? We want to use it for the Spotify like header and stuff. Oh, I'm like that's, dang, like that's this is cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm at work like getting emails like oh, I'm gonna do this at work. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> so I would like when I have downtime like be making the. Uh, like making the changes for them like and then ended up putting it on the um his spotify header and then he put on his twitter header i was like damn like this is cool um still hadn't met masego um just like was been talking to the manager and like just i was really like um just punctual with like the after shooting i I would send it the next day and stuff so i was like really i guess it looked like professional to them even though i didn't really know what the heck i was doing (laughs) is that is that like do photographers usually lag on that or i hear stories at least in terms with like and like models I've worked with, I always I always ask like, yeah, like what is like other photographers turnaround time, and they'll say like, dang, like sometimes it's like two weeks or it's like a month, Damn. or they don't even give me the photos and they lost them or stuff. What I hear all these fuck? horror stories. I'm like, dang, I can't be like this. Y- yeah. So I always always used to be like within two days. Now I'm I like I'm with like a week just because I have a lot of stuff. Yeah. But I'm, I always want to be someone that's like, kind of on point because i don't want people asking me like yo where are the photos at like it's taking mm-hmm. you so long especially yeah. people that are in like the industry and stuff yeah because if you if you if you're playing them like that then imagine like they're not going to want you to come back and exactly they want again, someone so. that's like just really punctual and stuff so i think that's something that stood out to them um so yeah like uh, f- like a month passed and then he had like another free show in la um damn he's generous yeah he was that 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 season he was (laughs) um yeah he had another free show in la at some theater downtown and same deal like i hit up um the manager and um i was like yo because i really i really like masego's music before like i even like was a part of the team and stuff so uh, i was planning to go anyways and same same deal got in and took some dope photos and this was like the really the thing that like kind of like took off for me um it was like dude it was just some crazy collage i don't even know how i did it like <laughs> honestly um but like he masego retweeted it and it got like thousands of retweets and stuff oh, and shit. favorites and i was like damn this is crazy um he like reposted it on his actual gram so that was like the first like the first like big like dang like and it got like a bunch of love and stuff so that was super cool and what year was this this was 2018 so Just this last was year. last year in the beginning of the year yeah okay i was like springtime so it kind of just took off and i was like it was it was cool like just seeing like your work like get so much love and stuff and um okay. to me like I, yeah i want people to see it but i was kind of just doing it like for like people i know and like for myself just like to improve and you know just like create dope stuff like I want to I want to please like people that I work with but like to me it's like also very important to me because I'm really passionate about it uh-huh. so um it was just uh, it was like super cool to see and um still I think I was supposed to meet Masego that day but after the show it just took a while and I was like tired I was like right, so I'm gonna go home because I still had to drive like from downtown like a like, 30 minute drive home push back to La Habra yeah back to La Habra so I was like damn I'm just gonna go home and then hopefully they like the stuff so I said that they liked it um Blah, 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 blah. And that was it. The last I heard from, like, Masego and his manager for a while. And I was still doing my, doing my, uh, doing my nine to five. And then they hit me up. They hit me up this time for Smoking Goose Fest. It's like a fest. It was a festival in, uh, Long Beach. Yeah. I actually went. I went 2018. Is that, uh, I think yeah. it was the same year. Yeah. It yeah, was yeah, like, two, uh, uh Erica Badu, Miguel. Yeah. Janaco. Yeah, I was there, yeah. Yeah, so it was a it was a dope lineup. Um and Masego was there. And uh they hit me up like to to shoot for the day and that was like my first like uh actual like gig for Masego. Um so I was all stoked about that. It was like my it was my second festival that I shot at, but this was like a bigger festival. Um so I was like super psyched about that and um ended up showing up took some dope stuff made another cool collage um and that's when i finally had met masego he was like 
su- super super cool at the time he was like yo you're the one that made the that crazy collage oh, it's like yeah that's me <laughs> we talked a little bit and um kind of just hung out with them for like a good majority of the day like before the show during the show and after the show and i was kind of just talking to uh, it was his tour manager not his actual manager his tour manager was like asking like yo like we're about to go on tour because his album was coming out lady lady okay um it was about to come out i think like in two months or something like that like we're about to go on tour um like i don't even remember how the conversation go but i was basically like i jumped on i was like yo like i'm your guy <laughs> i'd never been on tour before but i was like yo like i'm your guy like i'll I got, you, still I got had, you, you still had your job though at this time so had my job dude so, so this was a weekend this was like on a it was like a saturday yeah so um i'd actually been, got hit up to go on another tour with another artist that i won't name okay but um for whatever reason it didn't work out okay. and that was like a big thing for me because i was like super bummed when it didn't work out because i was like damn like this is my escape escape route from my job yeah like just to go on tour mm. like it was this was a u.s tour that's like a big break type right shit. and this artist she was pretty big like pretty popping and but it just for whatever reason didn't work out but i was like i was like not hurt but i was like damn like this would have been so dope like she yeah. was gonna be at Coachella. I was like, "Damn, when is she Coachella?" <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, it didn't work out for whatever reason. But like this had this had happened, so I was I was talking with the with the manager. I'm like, "Yeah, like I'm your guy," and it was just kind of just talked about, just like exchange exchange words and stuff. Um, but then I went back to my job again, and I w- it was I think August, and I finally made a decision like, "Yo, I'm gonna put my two weeks in, and I'm just gonna try to do this photo thing," and I this was before the whole smoking grooves. This was after smoking. After grooves. smoking grooves, okay. After smoking grooves, and I kid you not, like, after I decided to, um, like, I told my, uh, my, like, my supervisor, I was putting my two weeks notice. I remember I was driving home, and I get an email from uh, Masego's manager, and it's for uh, the proposal for the um, European tour Yo. for his lady, lady <laughs> thing, and I was, I, uh, I was like, dang, like. Loki, I cried. I was like, dang, this Dude, is crazy. Yeah, I called my mom like, yo, this, this what happened. Asking if I'm available. I just put my two weeks notice in. Damn, so, it happened like that fast. Dude, like right that, after bro. Because like, I was thinking, like, man, it's going to be rough the first like few months of being not a regular <laughs> nine to five worker. Um, yeah. But, dude, I was just blessed. So I know I, I know you don't like the word destiny, man, but that's no, that's I, yeah, destiny, <laughs> destiny, low key. Isn't it just crazy? Cause like the first like legit show I ever shot was like Mas- a Masego show, and yeah. then like this is like damn, I'm about to go on tour with Masego, and so, Europe too, and Europe. I never been to Europe, so I was like, damn, this is a trip. Um, so I I was just stoked about that. I did my last two weeks, and then um, I think it was the beginning of September. Yeah. Went out to Europe for the first time. I went on my first tour, and um, what are the what are the some of the places that you guys went in <sighs> Europe? That one we that one we went everywhere, dude. We started in the UK. We went to Paris. We went to um, I think we went to Amsterdam. We went to Jerusalem. What? Like, yeah, that was the, like the end of it. Budapest. We went to the Holy Land. Yeah, we went <laughs> to the Holy Land, bro. It was, it was crazy. Um, where else did we go? Shoot, Germany and. Spain and pretty much all the like major spots in Europe we went to we had like I think it was like 20 shows or something like that the fans out there are dope on huh? like the energy is like way different than shows out here right way different I mean depending on like different cities it's a little more than like others mm-hmm. but yeah and like like Masego gets a ton of love out there I want to say like just the same amount as he does here you know like yeah. internationally like yeah he's super international so like it was cool it was like really like the energy was crazy um just throughout that whole tour um, like even in Jerusalem, like that was one of like the like most lit shows. That's so crazy. it just weird, like <laughs> yeah, it just weird. Um, just seeing that. Um, so it was just crazy because just my life like totally just went in a different different direction within within like a few months. Yeah. Um, but you went, from, you went from that nine to five sitting on your desk to just like in Europe shooting Masego. Like in right, <laughs> it was crazy and like don't get me wrong, it was definitely like it was definitely like hard at times because it was like just something i'd never done before so just learning about just different things and just not sleeping and just stuff like that it was just like true life's true life's fun but it's like it's crazy like it's like non-stop and like 
on the go and and stuff but um just i, I love it i love it it was like I'm, yeah. I'm blessed to be doing like what i love and stuff mm-hmm. so um it's crazy man yeah what are are there some other places that photography has taken you like besides that europe tour yeah like so we did that europe tour and then right after like we flew back home for like it was literally like two days and it was like my birthday one of those days oh. so it was like two days i flew back flew back and then it was my birthday and then i went to like a drake concert for my birthday and okay. right after the drake concert i was on a flight to new york for the u.s tour oh shit. so like we literally had like a f- like two days off and that was it and then we were, did the u.s tour so i went all around the u.s and then right after the u.s tour we uh we went to we had like three days off and then we went to portugal for a festival and then we went to south africa oh shit. so that was that was crazy for me like yo so south africa like his heck? his that's like his his big fan base is out there right? he has a huge fan base out there like <laughs> they they love him out there like like well he's south african so yeah th- they it's crazy they're just it's a different just a different scene out there for him um but yeah that was my first time out there um but yeah, it was like a weird weird story like he didn't end up even going because some like like passport stuff that happened but he ended up having to like cancel his show out there but like the team flew out there so we were basically basically in south africa for like four days like kind of like a little vacation because we didn't (laughs) have a show um just like because of some bs that happened yeah so that was my first time in south africa flew back and then we had some time off for a while and then we ended up doing asia so i went to went to asia went to japan went to china um, Thailand, Indonesia. I hit a few spots and did all that. And then we ended up going, coming back, and then we ended up going to uh, South Africa again. So I, at this time, South Africa and, and uh, Kenya. So I've been there and I went to Cuba, I think uh, the following month too. So I just been like all these places within the last like year and a half. Yo, like through I was photography, say that dude. one year you've been to all these places. It's That's crazy. insane. That's yeah. insane to think about. Just yeah. <laughs> it's literally only been one year. So just imagine fucking what the future holds. It's exciting to think about, right? It really is, man. Like I think back like just even like thinking back two years ago, like trying to think of where my future would be, I n- never would have thought like ever would have thought this is what I would be doing. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. It's cool, man. It's, uh, it just really cool just being able to do all that. And, um, like I, like I said, like, I still don't know <laughs> a lot about anything, you know, in terms of photography or just life. I'm kind of just like learning as I go and just trying to p- pull things from different places mm-hmm. and, um, just kind of just add it to, um, just to my knowledge and stuff, just to be a better just better in what i do you know yeah um but it's been cool it's been really cool um a lot of people ask me like yeah like how do you how do you do it and i don't really like all i say is like yo like just do it (laughs) yeah there's not like there's no blueprint for this like everyone does it their own way but if you really like want something if you really want to do something you'll find a way Mm -hmm. like when it was just like me trying to get into like little shows in chicago like i was literally emailing everyone like you said you were sending your huddle tape to yeah. to everyone like if you really like want to do something you'll find any avenue any little path to get there you know and um of course everything's meant for you either it's either meant for you or not meant for you everything happens for a reason but like i'm i'm a big believer in like i don't like saying manifesting because everyone says that nowadays but like really like talking about what you want to do because yeah. the more you talk about it the more like so speaking into existence speaking into existence yeah like okay I'm a big believer in that. Yeah, and I think I mean it's easy to easy to think and say that like you got lucky, quote unquote. But like like you said earlier, like know how much work you put in as far as just like emailing people. Like right. it might not have paid off at that time, but look at what it's doing now. It's bringing like everything into fruition. Exactly. Like m- my mom would like always tell me like because I'd be going to these shows. She's like, "When are you gonna get paid? When are you gonna get paid? You're doing all this work and you're not getting paid." I'm like, "Mom, like, I just gotta, <laughs> they don't I understand. just gotta do it. You know, you just gotta build up." I'm like. I'm a nobody right now. Like, no one knows who I am. I'm just trying to just put my name out there. And that's really how it is. Like, you really got to start and you got to gotta work your ass off and, like, just make something of yourself. Like, of course, like we were saying, like, some people just get it like that and they're lucky. But um, 
so it just takes time like it's a yeah. it's a little process a little journey yeah um but yeah it's a, it's crazy it's a trip it's and it's interesting that you said like that as far as like speaking it into existence like i think that's true definitely like you have to talk about the things that you want in order for them to come into fruition like constantly but like i think there's like a big misconception out there just because of all these like motivational speakers these like these fucking I don't know, like these, like this book, these books, like the secret and stuff, right? Like talking about like, you, oh, you speak it into existence, you will have it. Like it, it's an important part. Don't get me wrong. Right. But you, you have to like, people don't speak things into existence and then all of a sudden they get it. Like they you put the work, work in. Yeah, yeah. They put could, the work in. It could easily be manipulated and like tweaked, like just like, oh yeah, talk about it and like telling everyone about it, tweeting about it, like posting yeah. on Instagram stories about it. No, but you got to get dirty. Like you got to put the work in. You got to go through some stuff like exactly and people get that's why people get mad and they say like i'd spoken into existence why didn't i have it why don't i have it it's like you just like when are you gonna sit back there and just like be like i want a ferrari like it's not gonna show yeah, up yeah it doesn't happen like that it might take years you know but yeah just like if you really want it like that first make it happen that first step though is the most important you say definitely okay definitely 100 sure. percent. like just believing it you know and and um it just becomes like a part of you, you know. Did you did you ever have like any men- mentors like as for photographers, or did you have any um, like, yeah, mentors or any inspiration from photographers? Um, I wouldn't say like mentors in a sense. Like, um, there was like people that I would look up to, or like people like work I really loved. Um, but I didn't really have any mentors until like I don't think he even knows he's, he's like kind of my mentor, but at my job. Um, my uh, nine to five job that last um, those last few months um, we had a uh, some people helping us in the marketing department and um, it was like this couple they actually own this uh, it's like a I guess I would call it a production company it's called Lovesick LA it's they do a lot of stuff in the area and just a lot of photography styling um, but like it's just this couple um, and this guy's name is Jose He's a dope photographer, um, but he kind of just gave me a lot of, like, advice and stuff and, like, just doing it, like, doing photography um, as, like, a as like a full-time hustle and stuff like that. So I would say, like, he was my mentor in a sense. Like, he taught me a lot just of photography-related, like, te- techniques, technique stuff and then also just, like, kind of life stuff. And um, he would, like, bring me on some of his shoots and stuff. So um, I would say, like, he was, like, my mentor in a way. But other than that, no, nah, not really, dude. Like, kind of just, I don't want to say I did it all on my own because I didn't, but yeah. I kind of just, like, a lot of trial and error. A lot of YouTube. Um, a lot of YouTube. <laughs> a lot of just, just, I don't even know, just, like, Googling everything and stuff like that. Yeah. But with it's w- crazy. With Google, like, in YouTube, just at, like, our fingertips nowadays, like, there's no excuse not to pursue whatever passion that you want. Like, the knowledge is there. Like, you right. don't even gotta go to college to, like, learn some of this shit. You can look it up on YouTube and Google. Like, exactly. Imagine how hard it would have been, like, just coming up as a photographer, like, before 2000s or something, you know? For real, like, like, how did you get your work out there, even? Like, seriously, like, yeah, we're so lucky now. Like, we just have, like, instagram as a platform or like just stuff like that as platforms just to showcase like what you do not even just photography but like anything you know like yeah. music or uh just like everything and anything um we're lucky for that because it just makes things so much more accessible to you you know like yeah it's crazy i don't know how people did it before yeah it was something fucking insanely hard uh do you what is what is like your favorite style of photography to shoot? Like obviously, like you do mostly like shows and everything, and that's like your profession. But like, is there a certain type of like hobby within photography that you personally like doing the most? I actually really enjoy like portrait stuff. Like I haven't done it as much lately, just because I've been like doing like a uh, like show stuff. But like before even that, or like in between, like when I was just doing it for fun, I would like just shoot with like different people and it wouldn't even be like uh like anyone like ig famous or i just like people to have like a cool look i really like just taking portraits you know Mm -hmm. just of like cool people uh people that dress dope you know like i really i really enjoyed that so um i would say like right now it looks like i just shoot shows but like really like portraits and um and uh concert photography like right there with each other like i really i really like like both just as much 
Okay. So, yeah, I don't know. What about, like, any hobbies, like, outside of photography? Um, outside of photography, I mean, I love music, man. Like, I don't make music, but I, like, I guess it's cool. Like, it's cool I get to shoot shows now because I would love going to, like, festivals and shows. Like, before even, like, shooting shows, I would be at, like, all kinds of different festivals and just little concerts, big and small. Um, so music was, like, a heavy, uh, heavy part of my life. So um, just that and sports, I grew up playing played football since i was four and i played rugby um since i was nine all the rugby. way through uh how did rugby happen uh i hated baseball <laughs> <laughs> it was just a little too boring for me and then uh, my mom found it it was like a local club in fullerton and um i started playing when i was nine and um when i first started playing those first two years it was touch rugby like two in touch and then it turned into contact when i turned 12 and then i was like dang like this is it like it just went hand in hand with football it was like football season and then rugby season that must have helped you out with tackling a lot right oh yeah like it was just it was just i don't know i loved it just because i don't know it was fun to me man so that was just those things it was like growing up it was just like football rugby school and um and i listened to music and that was it um so those were kind of like my uh I guess my hobbies in a sense. I love coaching. So I, th- I was telling you that yeah. that uh, that season after I graduated, I coached at my old high school and I just love coaching. Like, I don't know, something about it. I uh, just really like just connecting with the kids, not even just football related, but just like life related because mm-hmm. you're really like implementing um, just like skills, you know, life yeah. skills and football stuff. So I really, that's something I definitely want to do in the future too as well. Yeah. Um, or maybe like teaching a photo class or something. I don't know, <laughs> but like that's something that that's cool to me. So um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, hobby wise, yeah, I don't do too much nowadays. <laughs> I'm pretty low key. People say I'm boring. You just keep it <laughs> low key. Keep your head down. Yeah, low key now. Um, yeah, I just when I'm not, I've been traveling so much. So like when I do have like time home, I just I just like just chill um, with family or with my girlfriend or stuff like that. So okay, pretty low key. That's low dope. key guy. Yeah. yeah. As far as, like, music, like, that's cool that it goes hand-in-hand hand with what you're doing right now, too. Nice. It's, like, you're exposed to that whole side of it, too. Right. Um, and for football, man, like, people don't understand, or just as a coach of any sport, people don't understand, like, a lot of people don't understand how much of an impact these coaches have on these kids' lives. Like, Definitely. Me, I played football in different sports ever since I was a kid, too, and, like, you don't really remember, like, too many of the bad coaches quote unquote I don't want to say there's like there hasn't been too many bad coaches like nobody wants to be a bad coach but yeah, like yeah. the coaches that actually made an impact on your personal life are the ones that you remember like forever yeah, yeah up, up until this day right you know I totally agree with that like cause you don't you don't know what like kids are going through so like what they're going through yeah. like at home or like at school during that time so you just want to be like a positive like influence to them cause you could really like like you said you could be like you could really be someone they really remember and like really like thing like this person was like a a good example of like i would want to be in the future you know yeah so um yeah coaches definitely take a big take a big um part in in like sports players lives you know yeah so it's cool for sure yeah we're almost we're almost done here but i have a few more questions one of them is uh what are you looking to where are you looking to see yourself like within the the next few years like what's next for you Uh, the next few years hmm Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me this lately. Um, like, I love touring and stuff, and, like, I love, like, working in the industry that I am, I'm i in. But it is, like, it is, like, draining. So I can't be doing, like, this, f- like, forever. Yeah. But um, I would like to stay, like, like involved in, like, the music world, like, the entertainment world, and maybe just um, kind of just, c- like, like, I don't know, have, like, a creative hub, maybe, like, where... Uh, just people could come to that has like access to like photography videography styling like um casting just like maybe like a one-stop shop for for like the industry like yo this like uh john's little collective group has like access to all these things like and just be an outlet in that way if that makes sense i don't know like a creative agency kind of like a creative agency yeah it just has like access to all those different things not just like photography or videography okay but like kind of this all those little things and um kind of just like oversee that you know what i mean and kind of get my hands in it when i want to and then kind of just stay back when just kind of have like a team like that so okay yeah do you think that nine to five job that you have like you use a lot of those skills or do you like you ever use any of those skills like for your own personal 
well, like I want to say brand, but like your own personal marketing. Um, yeah, definitely. Like just like a definitely for marketing, and like took it took a lot of stuff out, and just also working with people. Um, I learned a lot about working with people. Um, just because I don't know, it was like it was just a little little journey on my nine to five job yeah. in terms of that, but um, mm-hmm. just like good and bad like i took stuff and i was like yeah i want to i want to use this and oh i don't want to use that you know kind of just deciphering like what's good and what's bad professionalism um good ways to like showcase yourself and stuff like that um yeah and like little things too like email etiquette and shit exactly a lot of that because um yeah that's something that's like now i'm like always sending emails or like going back and forth and just kind of just to save yourself time and like just kind of just being professional and just having like a a trace of what's been happening just just in case something comes up you know yeah that's always important for sure um so yeah i don't know okay (laughs) where can uh people find your work and like as far as like your social medias and everything else yeah um you can find me on ig my uh ig is john.mark j-o-h-n dot m-a-r-q um i have a twitter i think it's john mark x x j o h n m a r q x x and then shout out travis scott that. <laughs> oh yeah for real he <laughs> exactly username. i'm a big i'm a big travis scott fan so yeah, me too. um yeah and then my portfolio and website's attached to my ig i need to update it actually because it's really outdated <laughs> um but yeah man this for is sure. this has been super cool dude like just yeah. having an opportunity to just kind of just talk a little bit about my story and just um talk with you and um just kind of talked about a lot of different things yeah um, definitely but yeah i'm just hope whoever's listening just really could take stuff out of it uh use it and yeah i don't know <laughs> <laughs> no dude definitely yeah, you gave a lot of value to people especially yeah. um there's a lot of a lot of people a lot of creatives that listen to this and a lot of people that are looking to get in the creative industry so i'm sure that somebody's gonna get some good value from what you said okay I'm glad. um but my last question is if you could speak to a young 16 year old yourself like if you ever could have a conversation with yourself what would you what would you tell you Damn, uh, that's crazy. Um, I don't know, man. Just just keep going, just keep going. Um, just be confident. Um, don't hesitate. Be confident. Don't hesitate, and um, and just have fun and just be yourself. I don't know. Okay. And I think that's like the things for me that really either I I stuck to or I learned how to do just from that i guess from 16 year old to now um just like those those two things confident don't hesitate and just uh be yourself and yeah for sure awesome yeah, man. all right john you're a great oh, man. man i appreciate Thank this you. once appreciate again you, man. yep that's awesome. a wrap <laughs>